Audrey Schneider on the line to talk Penn State football. You can join Audrey on Land of Ten and also DK Pittsburgh uh, for the very best in Penn State football coverage uh, about halfway through the spring sessions with uh, April 21st coming up in Happy Valley for the spring game. I always like to get Audrey the state of the program kind of question out of the way this time of year. And for Penn State, it's it's pretty miraculous as an overstatement. Remarkable. <laughs> I can I can go with remarkable considering the loss to Pitt and of course the drubbing against Michigan two years ago okay. and where the program has come since then. People weren't necessarily believing in James Franklin at that point. And eight, nine weeks later, they're one of the top five to ten teams in the nation. They go to a Rose Bowl, they beat Ohio State, they win the Big Ten, and they're that close last year to playing for a national championship. You know, the the two very narrow losses. So uh, the state of this program is in extremely good shape. Absolutely. And I think you add now this recruiting class into it, which is the best um, in James Franklin's tenure, which I think is really saying something when you look at some of these classes that they've had. Uh, but this was a consensus top five group that they're bringing in. Uh, five-star Ricky Slade gets here this summer. So there's another guy in that running back mix. Micah Parsons is somebody that has garnered a lot of, t- a lot of attention already. Uh, they know he can play defensive events. So now they're working out at the, uh, the Will linebacker spot to see how that goes. So, you know, I think this program is definitely on the up and up. You look at the depth that they've been able to build, the depth that they've developed, uh, th- this is stuff that they haven't had in years past. Um, James Franklin said at the start of spring practice that now Penn State has a true three deep, and not only do they have a three deep, which of course they didn't during the sanctions, but he said this is a three deep that they actually believe they can win with and guys that they would feel comfortable putting out there, which certainly hasn't been the case in previous years, especially when you look along that offensive line. Here's the one knock I'm going to make. It's mm-hmm. it's all having to do with the schedule, and I don't like the game against Pitt. Now, this is strange because okay. I'm an old guy who remembers <laughs> the the rivalry when it mm-hmm. meant something and when it's great. And I, it's not that I don't want that game to be played because it, it's more to do with the state of the Pitt program, not getting to see Penn State play. You want a marquee opponent. Yeah, and Oklahoma, USC, or whoever else it would be in the non-conference, and, and they can't control that. Right. And once you pick off a power five, you're most likely going to have an FCS and a group of five around out the with a nine game schedule in play in the Big Ten now. So just your th- your thoughts about the scheduling and, and of course, yeah. the pick game now three consecutive years. Yes, yeah, so it's the third of the four year agreement. Um, and, you know, that's something I'm 28. So I didn't grow up on this rivalry. I know, um, especially <laughs> working for a website in Pittsburgh, you always hear a lot about that when people say, oh, you know, they love this rivalry because their dad loved it. Their grandpa loved it. Um, but for these kids playing here, unless you're from Western PA, um, you really don't get it. Um, it's just something that, you know, the way college football has gone, I think a lot of these kids, you'd say, hey, you know, would you rather play Oklahoma or would you rather play Pitt? Um, I think they'd probably say Oklahoma. You know, it's, it's just how it is. Uh, it's kind of gotten a little bit strange in college football, working away from those geographic rivalries. Uh, it certainly angers some of the fans, and I, I understand that part, but Penn State's theory, uh, athletic director Sandy Barber has said time and time again that what they want to do is kind of have that marquee opponent every fifth or sixth year. So you look at the schedule down the road, um, you know, they have Virginia Tech down there. Of course, scheduling is done so far in advance, you know, that it's tough to say, you know, 10, 15 years out, who's going to be that marquee opponent. Um, but they have Auburn on there, I want to say, and way down the road, West Virginia's on there, uh, Virginia Tech's on there. So they do have that, um, but certainly, you know, for a team that's been criticized for their schedule, there's really no willingness to change it. And I get it with the nine-game conference schedule. It's not like you have that wiggle room, um, especially when you're playing in a highly competitive conference like the Big Ten. Yeah, that top half of that division is unmatched mm-hmm. in college football. It's, 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 it's absolutely crazy, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it going to be tough to get through for anybody. All right, uh, Audrey Snyder from Land of Ten and DK Pittsburgh are joining us to get us caught up on Penn State football. The spring game's coming up in just a couple weeks. Audrey, we appreciate you stopping by. You got it. Take care.